I think I can hear the, the, the thing downstairs. Oh, my clock's running. Welcome to the programme. We're just going to wait for all the, the stragglers to turn up because we've only just gone live. So before we talk about Saturday and indeed Friday because we've got to analyse London Scholars versus Doncaster. 60-0. I mean, it's the well, first time I've that, knew what the score was. That's, that's not nice, that bit. <laughs> uh, Let's spend more time talking about the route, the, the road home from uh, Wembley on Saturday. Uh, because it was uh, discovered that James Child has been to see. And this is after we had a conversation earlier <laughs> on. that prof- I, I, watched, I watched professional wrestling, and apart, don't, we don't understand that. That's you know, some kind of bizarre concept. However... <laughs> James Charles, but did you pay to see her? I paid, yes. To see Jane McDonald live. I mean, obviously, she's one of the icons <laughs> of the city of Wakefield. Her, uh, Chanel from Big Brother, some rugby players, the people Martin in the Kellner. prison. Martin Kellner, the people in the prison. Chris not necessarily Kamara. in that order. <laughs> and, and, and two of those are not really from, from Wakefield. But, but she's good, apparently. She, well, in my defence, if you didn't know I was gay before, you do now. <laughs> well, I mean, that came as a surprise. <laughs> yeah. in the back of the she's a bit of a gay icon, yeah. No, she was actually good. I mean, the revelation, as I said to you, was that she was actually a good singer, that I realised. It wasn't just amusing. What happened was we were discussing making the Challenge Cup bigger than it is by bringing in some entertainment, and we didn't know what kind of budget we had. People wonder what James's role on this podcast is. It's not just to say... <laughs> Ex referee got this right and referee got this wrong. It's to, to listen to all the other rugby league podcasts. So me and Phil don't have to, so they don't go higher in the charts than us. And on was it Sky's podcast? Eric Bowman was saying how much he paid for scouting for girls and the lottery winners. Correct, yeah, right? something like seventeen thousand pounds for whoever it was scouting for girls. That's so it's where it's where Mac, Jay McDonald's ranks in that versus El, uh, Elvis that was four hundred quid. She's on loose women though, so I imagine she's not cheap, but. Um, so maybe we could just get Elvis for the next Challenge Cup yeah. final, 400 quid. Come to Wembley. Be well spent. Four games of rugby league. Probably cheaper than Alex Simmons. Possibly, I don't know. She probably sings better than Alex as well. The um, the other revelation over the weekend, which of course has very little to do with the action on the field, but the, um, the gaping mouths of the three of us when during the women's game, Flashing up on the advertising <laughs> were Tunnock's caramel. Wafers. I wonder where we're going during the yeah. Women's Cup final. Flashing, and believe, well, hang on. And well, we're going. going. Where's our percentage of introducing this king of biscuits to the sport? <laughs> Have you not seen our LED <laughs> perimeter advertising? That's not point five of a percent. It might be behind the magazine. I might have to move the magazine so people can see it. Look, they're, they're, where are they? Oh, no, I've, got, here. I've got a different angle on the, the thing yeah. today, so you can't see it. And there's also a leopard there on the book. Which again, if, you, if you're not watching the pod, if you're not watching the program, listen to the podcast, you won't be able to see. Um, we've got 20 viewers now. That, that's enough to, to start talking about the weekend of rugby. There is nothing. But I don't upset the London scholars. I mean, obviously, Carl Hall writes in the magazine. I don't upset him, but we don't have any time in league one anyway. So that, that happened. The only thing to say about that, yes, is there were only 500 people there, and when the concept of Friday Night Lights started, there were maybe two and a half thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe because there are three games at Wembley on the Saturday, it's going to be very hard also to get people to commit to something on the Friday night before. Um, so good luck to London Scholars and um, praiseworthy as well that they actually give us their crowd in these days when nobody does. Uh, but it, do, it does, as a concept, it does seem to have lost some of its momentum. Wembley Stadium is an environmentally um, aware thing, which is amazing it's an inanimate object. It is an inanimate object. Um, but it's environmentally aware, which is why they charge fifty pounds for parking. That's why, not to make money. Or the park next door for fifteen quid. Top tip for you. Top tip. We won't tell you where. No, fifteen quid. Right. We won't tell you which par- car park it was either, because I, I, I didn't put out the picture of the person. We couldn't work out who it was, whether it was Mick Jagger or not. Um, but we're going back for the next two years, which is amazing news. A great to have rugby league future secured, especially as we already knew we were going back ten years ago for the next. Yeah, I was just going to say, was it news? A, well, it's pierced to me. It's in the. It's, oh, in the, it's everywhere. So apparently, it was announced in 2018 that they'd signed a partnership till 2027 at Wembley. So, I don't know if it is two years off the deal we've got already. Yeah. The, the move into June, I can understand. The the two years yeah. makes no sense. Yeah. But I think, as you very rightly pointed out, um, that will be five different months in the last five years that the cup final has been staged, 
and we wonder why we don't have a brand or people know where it is in the calendar and therefore it would attract neutrals. So we can say all we like about other competing things that were on in London at the time. There will always be competing things on in London at the time. But if the people, the good people of London and, and the South don't know when the Challenge Cup final is, as in they know when Wimbledon is, um, it's not surprising that we don't feature when they can also go to Twickenham and watch Rugby Union or... Arsenal in their first day of the Premier League season or, or even Millwall if they're with McCarthy's guys but who lost at home but we won't mention that sorry no. I agree there's got to be some consistency about when the competition is going to be held obviously the, oh, it didn't announce when it was going to be held in 2025 did it said it was going to be uh, in yes. June in 24 did it say June for the next two years I think it did June the 8th for the next two well it won't be June the 8th June, June the next, for the next two, two years, years okay. yeah. yeah well fair enough and I mean, I, I think the idea was to move it back to May, wasn't it? But it's ended up sort of early June, um, which is which is better, I think, because it's away from the, the school holidays um, in the in the summer period. But we've had yeah, October in twenty twenty, July twenty twenty one, May twenty twenty two, August this year, and and June next year. The other thing is, I think that will signal the death knell, if not immediately, of Magic Weekend. Because I don't think you would have the Challenge Cup in June and then. Magic at the beginning of July, uh, which it, which it was this year. Unless it gets moved later in the year, as they had previous year Pro- when they had it. Problem in with that is football grounds, yeah, and their availability. And any earlier, or as you mentioned before we came on, the year that they had it in Wales in February. But I guess where does that? Fit I, with I'd the, like to start the, the competition with a Magic Weekend, where everybody meets at the same place and we have a big festival and say it's the start of Super League. And we're all here together and arms around each other and sixty thousand people in one stadium over a weekend. But it, you've got to decide where that is in February because a, which stadium are going to be available at a football stadium? You don't want to travel too far in February because you're inviting abandonment because of snow. Or, <laughs> Um, we shouldn't start in February anyway that's another issue but th- there might be a case for saying unless the World Club Challenge is nailed on as your season starter and of course we saw another game this weekend that was moved from week one with uh, Saints and Huddersfield so it disrupts your Super League you either start with a standalone World Club Challenge or maybe round one is your magic weekend to kick it off your Challenge Cup in June to give it a boost mid-season and your grand final and promotion relegation or whatever championship grand final as it will become at the end of the season I think you're right it probably signals the end of the magic weekend probably doesn't it because uh, you need to be inside a stadium with a roof and I don't know if there are so that's Cardiff and that's it then, so that's, yeah. and that's Wimbledon then. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it's too big a stadium as it is so um, just can't see that happening is centre court smaller than odds yeah it's a 20,000 I think centre court no I mean the pitch oh it'd be in line with it's, it's, Court. Oh! Pitch, court, pitch. Yeah. One of the um, you can tell there's no crisis at Whiteson this week because there's no one on the comments yet. Uh, <laughs> so, Kev, <laughs> okay, where are you? <laughs> What's going on? I um, think we may have done Warrington to death. We have because everyone complained. Well, one person complained last week. We didn't talk enough about the Challenge Cup final. Well, here's an hour on the Challenge Cup finals and other such stuff. Lee Leopards are the champions of the Betfred Challenge Cup they beat Hull Kingston Rover 17-16 I'm not sure how much of the game I saw you probably saw more of it than I did because I was in the bowels of the stadium speaking to people for much of the first half hence why I didn't vote on the Landstod Trophy because I think you're supposed to, I know people just like well Lock and Lamb kick the goal and just give it to him anyway you know like, like when Luke Gale got voted for it for doing a drop goal but the great thing this year well, and full credit to the RFL media people we didn't have to vote no. until after the game was finished I don't know it's quite a spread of names, apparently. Was it seven? Seven out of you know, 34 or whatever. Um, you so voted, didn't you? I think it was 20 out of the 29 were for, for Lachlan Lamb. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, the others were, were a mix. First I did, I did yeah, I did. And, uh, I think it was I'm very, complaining because you're not... Sp- you're, I bet it, was very difficult to, it was very difficult to, to decide, to be honest, certainly at, at 80 minutes. Uh, and you sort of suggested that they usually do the vote 10 minutes to go I mean that was even harder at that you, point you were shocked it was on paper and, and pen weren't you well I, I thought I'd heard it was but then to actually see it in person I suppose it was a different story but um, you got to see a lot of things in that press box didn't you <laughs> yeah the, the similarity between referees and media is <laughs> is there uh, a collection of um, Dispar- mis- 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 misfits I think both <laughs> media and referees yeah <laughs> speaking to myself here um, but no I, I mean 
there was a number of players that you could have picked. I mean, I, I thought John Asiata was a, played very well for Did. for um, for Lee, uh, yeah. and probably similarly there were players for for Hull KR you could have picked. It. Sean Penny Down was outstanding, and I think if they'd have won, he'd he'd have probably yeah. been the player in the match. I just think ultimately when it comes down to a drop goal to win it in a in a in a, a cup final that's not been effectively drawn since what 1982, I think you had pressed to not. Well, and the other thing is the one genuine moment of quality, and we'll talk about whether quality matters, was Lamb creating and scoring the try. Yeah, I was going to say that. It was a great try, that. Yeah, yeah. and they made some good line breaks, Lee. And, and, and his kicking game throughout, throughout was pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, right, I mean, Michael Lewis played well. I, I thought Gareth O'Brien was excellent for Lee. Uh, Tom Amone, who didn't get a vote, I thought was yeah. immense. Yeah. Has Tom Briscoe now become the highest point scorer in Wembley history or something? Try scorer. Try scorer. Yeah. Eight, eight now at Wembley. It's not bad, is it? Scores again. Um, again against Hulk <laughs> Why? Why are people so... Um, I don't know if surprised this way. Hulk KR congratulate Lee as if this is some kind of new con. It's like the people sweeping up change rooms as this kind of excited. Oh, look at this classy gesture. You don't just say, oh, you didn't deserve it, you were crap, do you? It's not, you were lucky. Especially as they play each other again in two weeks. I don't understand the. I mean, I know it gets a click on someone's website or whatever, but. But they, on the balance of everything, from what I saw, they were the better side over the 84 minutes. Can't, can't have any complaints about who are the champions. I think you can look at it in two ways, I think. One is, let's analyse who deserved to win and who didn't and all the incidents in the game, should there have been Simbin or other. And, and that's fine, that, that's mm. what maybe we're, we're here to do. But the other thing is, I think you've got to take a step back from what you saw and just look at the overall impact of it. So a lot of people were saying, oh, it's a shame there were less than 60,000 there. Throughout most of the main game, the volume of noise from both sets of fans was such that had there been another 20,000 people in the stadium, it wouldn't make the scrap a difference. It was full full marks to Hull KR and Lee fans for creating a fantastic atmosphere. And in all the debates about should Wembley still hold the Challenge Cup final, you try and tell those people that we saw walking down Wembley Way and the, the experience that they would have had in the National Stadium that that wasn't in some way part of the occasion then then I think we, we you know yeah take it on a tour take it to stadiums that might be more suited in terms of capacity you will lose something mm. um, I think the other thing is all three games were very similar in the in the sense that for the entire 80 minutes you couldn't call them quality contests but that didn't matter because there were some individual moments in there that will last forever and we live in a in an age where the clip and the social media that you can make from something is almost more important. You know, the 80 minutes is for for people like us who love rugby league and can sit there and take it apart and try and explain why certain things happened and why certain didn't and for fans to debate in the, in the coaches on the way home about what they did right and they did wrong. But for people who, who want to entice into the sport, whether they're fans or commercial operations, if you can show them Caitlin Beaver's try, it doesn't matter that, that they lost. Now, if you can show them Lachlan Lamb's drop goal, which happened to be the winning one, if you can show them Batley's try on the hooter, which, you know, again, they didn't win, but I, I would, I, I haven't calculated, but I would say on the people that I follow on social media, Batley's, been, that Batley's try has been replayed more than anything else this weekend. You know, what was he going through? Something like 16 pairs of hands. And at the end of it, they score the most amazing try, but it doesn't win them the game. It doesn't matter; it doesn't win them the game. You don't even know who you don't even need to know who Batley are. <laughs> you can just admire. That Here's something that happened. Happened. They had to do something. They did something. It's a br- the stories that came out of Wembley. I thought were brilliant this year, and it, it doesn't matter that the quality aspect may not have been there for the entire eighty minutes. I thought it was a great day. I did, and it was good to see the women's get the final being played as a curtain raiser. There was, you know, the, the crowd was looking fairly healthy towards the back end of that game as people yeah. got in a little bit early. Um, and and as you rightly said, the atmosphere that was generated, we were sort of more towards the whole KR end yeah. in fairness. But yeah. the atmosphere that was generated from both sets of fans was 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 great. And um, as you rightly said, imagine what it would have been like. I suppose if you'd got. I don't know what was it fifty eight another another ten another twenty thousand, but it was 
it was, in, it, you know, it was a, it was a great, it was a great atmosphere, and I, it's just a shame when people talk about the magic of the cup. I think the magic of the cup's still there, and I actually don't think it's a, that much money in the grand scheme of no, things. Not, not for you free. Know, yeah. You can get a, what a ticket from what twenty quid. Um, you share your travel in a car on the way down, or you get your bus uh, subsidised bus from the club or whatever. Um, in the grand scheme of things. I, I don't quite get this argument about yeah I appreciate I think in terms of Magic Weekend I think that has taken something away from the Challenge Cup final because I, I'm not convinced you get the same level of neutrals that you used to get in, in, in sort of decades no, gone by it was hard to say whether there were more neutrals there this yeah. year because there were six different teams mm. it, I don't know how you calculate that to the naked eye you're still not getting all the you know I didn't see a Whitehaven scarf. I might no, have but in, in fairness, thirty years ago, somebody's now going to uh, yeah. send us it. No, so there will be, here. there will have been, and there will have been there. Yeah. But you used to get that sense. We, we, we were there quite early, hence the fifteen pound um, parking. But don't tell me what it was. Um, and normally, as you see people coming into the stadium, you can identify which club they're from, and you go, "Oh, look, I'm slightly like here." Or I didn't really see that. No, but, but I, we didn't move around that much, did we? And I, I think I didn't spot where the Batley fans or, or where or where the Halifax were, fans were sitting until the men's final had finished and people had left the stadium and then they sort of emerged they were they were there <laughs> but you didn't spot them and I think that's probably the things with, with, thing with neutrals is that they were probably there and I think some neutrals stayed for that 1895 some left appeared to leave at half time and, uh, and, and that, again the debate about the 1895 is where do you cite it and how do you promote it but if you've got the women's final and the BBC are taking the first two, then it has to go third. Credit also to the Batley and the Halifax fans because they never lessened their support and fervour. Again, for, there might have been, and I'm, I'm guessing, and I don't want to do either of them a disservice, a couple of thousand of each, maybe mm. a few more Halifax. Um, so if you had in that stadium, let's say, 6,000 fans, it didn't detract for from the element that it was Wembley you try and tell those 6,000 that they shouldn't have been at Wembley and we need to move it somewhere else or you know it, it, does, it meant everything yeah. to those fans it loses something say if you move it to I don't know wherever Aston Villa or whatever Everton's or, new or stadium or if you play at 8 o'clock in the morning because you want it on before <laughs> the, I just think it, it, it loses something by it not being at Wembley yeah. it, it still carries that prestige uh, and people making that sort of trip down to London so I for me, I still think the stadium is the right players. I think it's it's just about how do you get more people there. When you look back at the history, I was sort of had a quick look today that um, 2018 Catalan played Warrington 50,000, inevitably because it was probably Catalan. But then ignoring the St Helens Castleford final in 21 because that was affected by COVID as a limit on the number mm. of people that you could get in there. It was only really last year's at 51,000, and before then. You have to go back to 1945-46 to see a, a similar crowd. And so. the, other, the other thing that was made mention, though, is that when we did the initial deal with the new Wembley, so 2007 to 2017, included in that were all the debenture holders yeah. because they got a 10-year ticket for um, the, uh, contributing to the cost of the new stadium that meant they could go to any event. So we, we were at liberty to include 15,000 whether they turned up or not yeah. so all of those crowds from 2007 to 17 take 15,000 little asterisk gone yeah I mean I think when you look back at the pictures they, they are bigger crowds during that period but you're right I don't, uh, I don't know I, 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 there, were, there was some traffic there obviously were traffic issues on Saturday and, and you know I know people that didn't go in the end and they turned back round but it didn't it didn't for me take whatever it was 15,000 the if, if they'd already bought a ticket you would be including that it's just that they weren't there yeah. to hand their ticket over. Yeah. I, I, I think we get too obsessed with crowds and I don't think the issue necessarily is the teams that play I think we did get more this year because it was two teams who haven't been there for a very long time but I just think it's the romance has gone because we know it's going to be two Super League teams yeah but if you're in the Championship in League 1 you, you know you, you, you've known in the last however many decades the chances of you getting to the final is almost slim to none but that's why the 1895 needs building up as but then all you're doing there is you're just getting the teams from those two championship teams going probably and not you're not encouraging other championship league one teams I don't know how you got for me you've got a good look at the sort of uh, rugby union model whereby they sort of put the emphasis back on community clubs yeah um, which you can't do to sell most. tickets 
because everybody's away. Well, that's why you have to move away from the summer yes. holidays, and yeah. and you know, I don't know, I don't know to what extent they still do this, but they 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 was they had, the RFL employed staff to almost just solely look at school trips and community club trips yep. where they put on coach travel subsidised coach travel to sell tickets and which they can now do in June yeah and and hopefully that move back and they, they can keep a settled settled um, date for the Challenge Cup final then that should help matters so that each year you know that if it's the 8th of June or there or thereabouts you're going to go make a trip to I, Wembley I think the other thing as well is that it, the end of the season the, particularly the end of the Super League season but also the same in the Championship you're into paid playoffs and finals mm. if you put the Challenge Cup final too near them and you're throwing in for Super League <laughs> clubs a trip to Catalan and you're throwing in for Championship clubs a potential trip to Toulouse which everybody would like to do if they can afford it because they've all heard what a great time it is and, and even clubs you know, like Batley when they played there the other week you know, there's, there's suddenly three or four hundred Batley fans going to Toulouse and having a fantastic time so you factor that in you need to move the Challenge Cup away from that expense um, and, and we haven't done that, you know. So to move the Challenge Cup to even later in the season, uh, you know, suggestions are, you know, we used to have the, the Challenge Cup final one week and the Championship final the, the following week, or vice versa. We just, as fans, do not have the amount of money to to do that. Um, so yeah, do it in June. Get special deals, particularly for for schools, especially schools that that play, you know. In the champion schools, maybe one of the things could be which you, can, which you actually come and go and watch because you, the stadium wasn't but, open. But one but of the but ideas of the having champion a... schools at, at, at for your school at any yeah. level, and you get subsidised tickets to go to the final. But one of the ideas of having a blank weekend is that you get the people from those clubs that otherwise will be playing mm. go into the game, and so that's for me again why you have to tap in. And I think there was some criticism. I don't know why on social media of Wakefield and oh, what have we done now? about putting on coach travel oh yeah, yeah we've final. done something positive yeah, yeah, well sorry. I mean you know of course you every do every club should be doing that but the, but you the, the, the strange thing about this Wakefield do that every year yeah. <laughs> the supporters club do that every year yeah but that's what you should like that's what should be happening the donkeys, yeah. don't you that's what should be happening for the challenge again, yeah, in terms of the women's game talking about attendance um, clearly we got the figure that it, they stopped counting at one o'clock and it was 8,338 which was the biggest attendance they've been for a Challenge Cup final what we did find was that both Leeds and St Helens as clubs really backed this so there were corporate parties there there were uh, I think again subsidised travel from both of the clubs to get fans there. that can only grow you know the first time you do it people watch and go I think I wish I'd been, I'd been there because that not, not only did it look like a good game but it's it's worthy of going if my team is or I'm just a supporter of the women's game. I get the added value of two other matches after it, but I thought both of those clubs were absolutely admirable in the way they, you know, the, the girls, the, girl, the girls, women, ladies. No, you like to say girls. It's all right. Set off. The girls played well the day before. You know, they were they were given. You know, they didn't have to sort of drive down at four o'clock in the morning, play a game, <laughs> and and then be back. You know, they, they they were treated in the way that the men's teams of those two clubs would have been treated if they'd got to Wembley. You know, they were given the same access to the stadium Suits. for the captain's run. They were dressed. Yeah, I, I just thought there's a real starting point there yeah. for saying that's that's a great selling piece. That can't go backwards. Neutrals again may realise that no matter who was in that women's final. And for the let's be honest, for the next three or four years, it's going to be York, Leeds, and Ellen's yeah. or probably yeah. Wigan. Um, it's worth going just to watch that as a neutral. I'll read Andy's tweet because it pretty much summed up everything I wanted to say. But he's put it over two tweets, so I can just read him and you can decide whether you agree with them or not it says Kenny Mine moved the final from Wembley defence in early KR fans travelled 140 miles in three matches to make it to Wembley Lee 308 and he's done maths and stuff uh, so the road to Wembley wasn't arduous a day trip weekend away of 400-ish miles in 2023 is highly a trek to the Patagonian rainforest the biggest issue is how the sport is perceived by those outside the village of rugby league we will become a provincial insignificance if we surrender Wembley and play the match in the heartlands the full stadium argument is a dead cat Prestige is why Wembley needs to remain its home. You heard all the women in the build-up talk about they never thought it would happen to them. Um, Batley, Halifax, same. You know, Batley's never been to Wembley. Halifax, not been there for a donkey's Lee and Hulk, yeah, all the build-up is around. Well, Lee were there, it's 1971. Sorry to mention that again, Phil. Right. Hulk, yeah, trying to pull away from the memories of 2015 or whatever. Going and, and as 
you both know because you were both there in different capacities Spurs wonderful stadium and not to take anything away from Spurs playing internationally that would be great if you do take the Challenge Cup final to Villa Park or the new Everton Stadium or Newcastle it's gone you don't, Wembley for all its faults and there are many of them and we, you know, we're not going to go back 30 years and have the debate about where the national stadium should be because it's there now I'm not going to move it all the history is there as soon as you take that away it doesn't have the same thing. Hmm. we can move the grand final away from Old Trafford and I don't think it would have the same effect no, because no. although the premiership's been played there since 87 and the grand final obviously since 88 <clears throat> it's it's just a football ground in the north of England yeah it's that it's one of the, when, when we went there. It was one of the best facilities we could have gone to <laughs> that was accessible for the bulk of the fans that would be there. Challenge Cup is not that competition, um, and and yeah, you know, it would it would have been nice if it had been nearer purely from the logistics of getting there. But actually, it wasn't half a great day out. Some here are some comments from some people. They've, you've all come in now, which is good. Um, I'll come back to Frank's one about the penalty trying to cut final because I didn't see it. Cause I don't, so I'm not that a comment on it anyway, of course. But uh, Teddy says I watched the men's and the women's finals, but staying for the third game was too much for me. Sorry, you don't have to stay for all three. No, no. It's, it's it, there it, if you want it. You don't have to apologise. You can stay for one game. It doesn't matter. Uh, Frank says 1895 cup final should have been before the men's. That's a TV decision. Yeah, they it's they totally wouldn't have had team. the women's game on BBC Two two hours of bargain hunt and then come back for the men's yeah. final so it is it either goes first or last yeah, doesn't it yeah you it, it can't go in the middle and if and we go on to and if Craig it goes first then you're either going to lose the <laughs> under seven game yeah. Yeah. or you're going to have the under sevens game at about four o'clock in the morning to get the 1895 <laughs> but you're also going to have that same debate which is uh, and it goes back to Craig Lingard's point before and after the final if a broadcaster doesn't want to show it they ain't going to show it you know, we can't force the BBC to, to show a game they don't want to show, So, and there's no other broadcaster interested. Regardless of where the 1895 Cup final is in the day, it's for us. I, I think he had I'm not some, sure it's for everyone. But I think he had some very valid comments mm. to say about whether the competition was treated with the promotion, respect. promotion, yes, definitely. I think also they announced that it was going to be on our league coming, what was it, two days before? Again, it's almost like oh, we perhaps should have promoted that a couple of weeks before so people knew that if they couldn't get down to Wembley where they'd be able to see it that sounded a bit haphazard now again logistics of of that we're not privy to other than um, we know that had it been produced by a different production company there may well have been a charge for it there may well have been a video ref as well and there may <laughs> well have been better graphics but the fact that it was announced quite late with a company that doesn't have access to all that paraphernalia that's what we got well I think you know it, due respect to the teams that, that were there we need to get that bit sorted out earlier you, as well you should be able to sort that out at the start of the season because yeah. you know it's going to happen you know yeah. it's going to be an well maybe they were waiting for Premier to say if they were going to cover it and clearly they're in a lot of financial problems and weren't going to pay for an extra game which is what they might have been yeah. hoping they would do but I'm, I, I think he had some very valid comments certainly about the the launch on the Monday where they were clearly on the periphery compared to the men's and the women's um, but yeah, you know, the, the coverage needs to be known earlier, and then you know more people might have watched the the, the R League and would have seen probably the best try scored at Wembley. Absolutely fantastic final, says Chris. Gripping game that had it all. So good that in years to come, no one will talk attendances. Keep it at Wembley. Sell out like the bottom tier first before the top tier. I think they do try to do that, but yeah, there were some people in the very top <laughs> tier, which again will be the cheaper <laughs> tickets. Yeah. So you don't want to deny people the chance to. To, to pay what they can afford but sometimes you, when you look there and you think well if we'd have had all 60,000 in two tiers it would have looked and sounded better because the television doesn't normally pick up the empty tier until of course it's celebration time I think, I think they when could, you can't avoid it I think they did all they could they, they, yeah. they, they blocked off the top tier behind the, the cameras and the rest it has to be focused on getting people there yeah. not well, hide, and, hiding the fact that people aren't and I t- tend to get the tend to have the feeling that the people who moan most about the attendance are people who are never going to go and regardless of if you paid them unless it's their team if you flew them down there <laughs> in Rishi Sunak's helicopter and gave them the best seat in the house next to not next to Derek Bowman because Amy Manners must have been furious she been mauled throughout bruised. the game <laughs> bruised next to Lindsay Hoyle you get to give out the cup as well they still would moan about the attendance because they ain't going uh, moving away from Wembley would be suicide says Teddy it's the National Stadium sleeping in history you'd have to move the rugby league statue 
He's moved it away from Wembley, says Chris. We've mentioned this on the way down, well, I don't know where we were going to move it to. I think, for scrap, probably. I think the other thing as well is that the BBC have been long time partners with the Challenge Cup. And again, all of the, if you look back in history, you're going to hear Eddie Waring commentating on the BBC. So, you know, the 71 footage was Stuart Ferguson scoring and Eddie commenting on it and Alex Murphy laying down when he should have been standing up and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but I'm not sure how how much the BBC would want to keep giving it the coverage that it got if it wasn't at Wembley. Because it's at the National Stadium at the end yeah. of the day. It has national significance and it's, it, uh, it's a competition of When the calendars are published in the in the newspapers at the beginning of the year and we keep going on about, oh, why are we never mentioned? The only thing that's ever in there is the Challenge Cup final because mm. it's on the BBC. Yeah. How you sell it? Do you have more entertainment around it? Do you sell it as a big day out? I don't know, but... Not necessarily more entertainment, but what entertainment? Yeah. Because the, the stuff on the pitch... Because sells there, exactly there isn't that. very much time between the games, no. to be honest. I think that's the one thing you may have found being in the media area, that if you're trying to fully box <laughs> off one game, the next game's just about well, there wasn't to much time between the games. I mean, you barely you know, had time no. to go back for your third summer. <laughs> no, no, that's true, yeah. For uh, those second that chocolate brownie. For those, for those, those that didn't get any, because there weren't any left by the time we went. <laughs> I mean, even I managed to get about two of them, because I, I was up and down all over the place. Um, You're not allowed to say like a bride. No, story, no, I wasn't going to say that, but you say it now. Um, <laughs> good evening, gents, says Carson. Chance got was Carson an amazing went. experience, he was there. The best thing were the people in and around the stadium. And to add to that, Carson, the, the people who work at Wembley, and I think we've said this before, brilliant. Couldn't Can't have, fault the people at Wembley who have, work there. Couldn't have been nicer or more helpful. Excellent. A credit to the. The thing is, if Carsten can get there from Switzerland with no vested interest in any of the teams that are going to be there, then I think we can get there from Burnley. Phil says he thought John Terry had Derek Bowman, uh, had a Derek Bowman outfit on for, for the uh, one of the <laughs> Chelsea fans. Um, he's like he, he's always he's always around, isn't he? You can't miss him. He's there. I, I think. You Imagine know, if Derek Bowman was from Oldham or Dewsbury. I think he um, he's been fantastic for this particular competition this year. The amount of coverage that um, he's given and, and and allowed, or the stories that you know, he, he, I haven't seen yet the piece that um, the BBC did in the lead up that you you, you saw it, it was excellent. Um, I know there were some people watching it at Wembley as well when we were there. Um, you know, it, unless you've got characters like that, you can't tell those stories. Yeah. and he does open himself a little bit up for. Um, for, for ridicule, he doesn't mind. No, um, because he's delivering, so you can. And as he rightly said, the, the, the rebrand works because they were they're playing well. Yeah, the rebrand doesn't absolutely. work if they're bottom of the league. Yeah, um, but you know the fact that they built this built this up, you know, for probably two years now, really, in terms of the the long lead up to to winning the Challenge Cup final, hasn't happened overnight, has it? And there's a genuine sense of fun around it. They're yeah, not taking themselves too seriously. You know, we, we have rebrands where, you know, it's all very sanctimonious and we're altering the 150-year-old well, badge and all that, okay? But this was... <laughs> Derek's decided we're not going to wear the same colours as Wigan anymore. We're going to differentiate ourselves from the last time we've been in Super League because the three times that we have, we've been in basket cases. And I take my, my put my hand up for one of those because I was in charge. We're going to be different. And everybody bought into it. The players bought into it. Um, he set himself up right at the very beginning to wear all the clothes. But it's worked. Yeah, and people would sort of say, well, why don't we make the players the centre of attention? But I just think for... For this, the build-up, it was easy to put Derek out front and centre of so all the because it take all the pressure off the players by making it all about Derek and the leopards as opposed to the players. That would be different if it was another year. Yeah. And you look, that's, that's you look at the, gone, the number of fans that we saw that were wearing that the shirt. Attire. That shirt from Saturday is now, for the want of a better phrase, iconic. Yeah. yeah. That if they can produce more of those shirts, yeah. they will sell out because everyone has seen that now. And it, and it there looks is, daft, but if. But Wiggins, there isn't another sporting team that has a leopard on Wiggins, it, apart from North Leeds, and we're suing them. Wigan's awful warrior kit in 97, 96, they had that awful warrior, the Wigan fans won that, I don't think they won anything in it. If they had won something in it, it would be more well thought of so, than meaningless marketing rollocks. I went to the 100 yesterday, which is fascinating, fascinating, free tickets, didn't pay. <laughs> and... Before Bit like Wembley, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no free food. I tell you what, though, thirty-four quid for a hat. Even the people outside saying the knockoff ones, fifteen quid. That's, that's I saw Masters as bad as twelve quid for a pie at Wembley. 
but on the the hundred website, this meaningless marketing stuff. This is great. This is this is what they describe Headingley as a place where we get it done. Well, the men didn't yesterday. Headingley, the home of your heroes, the Northern Superchargers. The names are terrible. <laughs> Northern phone chargers, my nephew called them. Um, <laughs> so he's funnier than me, which is good. But um, but that's the kind of marketing rubbish that you immediately see through. Whereas you're right, it's, it, it's amateur. I'm not going to move away from the fact that I said last year it's amateurish because it is because it was because the way they did it and the badge changing three hundred times. I think the graphic file says final at the end of it, as if it's some kind of joke. The kit having the wrong animal on. The away kit, I think the, the blue away kit is brilliant. It's a wonderful kit. The home kit, I don't like. But I've never known, if you look back at when Cardiff City went from blue to red and then changed back, the amount of fuss and hassle and everyone kicking off about it. Leeds United have a sponsor that has the word red in it. Not the colour red, the word red. And all the fans are, you know, well, they're idiots, aren't they, anyway? <laughs> but Lee. Sweeping generalisation. Well, it doesn't matter. Lee have got rid of the colours they've had for however long. I know there's still a bit of red on there and whatever, but that's not a league kit, is it? That's no, it's some it's Daft Leopard thing. And there hasn't been a massive backlash from their fans. I'm sure the fans because, who don't like because it. Because they've been winning. Yeah. Well, well, well. But, they drink the shirt early kind of... on, didn't they, to add a bit of red back in to appease <laughs> them. But you're right. The fans, have, the fans by and large, have, have thought, we're going to... Well, if we don't get behind this, Derek's just going to do it anyway, so we may as well, but... They are buying into the whole thing. So even though I, I, I still think the way went, they went about it was terrible, it's worked. So what? Everyone's going to do it now. Who's going to be next? You couldn't make it up what they have done, says Chris. Uh, exactly the fresh injection and realisation of a dream that in US sports would have a Netflix got documentary about them. I was just going to say we had that conversation in the car on the way back, didn't we? That, uh, you know, the, the sort of three, four minute video in the build up to the game. I said to you, didn't I? It would have made a great documentary mm. to follow Lee's, you know, promotion into Super League yeah. at the end of last year into yeah. their story well, to Rexham. win the challenge. It's Rexham, yeah, isn't it? absolutely. And 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 stories like that, you don't have well, to follow sport. Never mind rugby league. Going to enjoy. back to what worked in terms of um, the key moments of all of the games, what we had were stories. So mm. we did have the Lamb story. That was amazing. You know, when, whenever as a father and son hugged each other in tears at the end of a game because the son's just won the game and the father effectively has rescued his career and been with him since he was six. The Chris Chester story, you know, 2015, which you must be sick of. I asked him at the launch. I think he was more worried about wearing a leopard print suit, to be fair. But, you know, he's banished the 2015 because he's gone back with the, the team, you know, that, that played against his team in 2015. Um, and he's put together the, this collection of, of, of people who we, you know, a lot of us scoffed at. And, and I'll put well, my I, I thought, I, call I, thought, I, thought the other week. I, I thought it was, a, you know, an aging team and the best that they could get on. But I, I never once thought they would be likely to finish in the top four, win the Challenge Cup, and build something that is clearly going to last, rather than um, a collection of individuals that won a trophy and then moved on or or whatever. That they've worked to do in replacing some of the ones that are getting towards the end of their career. But they, you know, they've got to the, the stories that we had. You know, the the, the Jody Cunningham being the player of the match in in the women's game, but such an art, articulate advocate of women's and girls' development, and that's her role. You know, the the again, the, the, we mentioned Caitlin Beaver's try, but if you know the, the backstory behind that, she's the first person to referee a game there, and now score as good a try as you'll ever see there it, it's it's adding to that legend you, you want stories you've got you know Simon Grix and Craig Lingard both leaving their clubs and both passionately talking about what it meant to those clubs as they leave you've got Craig Lingard being arguably the only coach who's ever going to be on the touchline there in bare feet <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and if anybody else does it they'll and be the bucket, yeah. copying yeah. Craig Lingard so yeah. you know, it, it wasn't even Let's analyse every minute and see where he went right and wrong. It's it's how we can build on those stories, and I just I just thought it had it had so many this time that um, you know even Ryan Hall facing Tom Briscoe, he, you know you know long term teammates that had won so much together and they're now trying to prevent each other from 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 winning. It's yeah, fantastic. I'm just searching Lee Leopards on Google and and it comes up with fireworks to celebrate their thing. That's exciting. I was trying to see if I could buy a shirt, but their website's not working properly. But but there is the question. I mean, 
where do we make the money from? Here's um, Andy again on Twitter um, saying, you know, crowd uh, viewing figures on the BBC, 1.1 million peak viewing figures. We should be working out how to get some of these through the turnstiles and into club shops. Well, go back to the the hundred again yesterday. I mean, the the gear is expensive, ridiculously expensive. But if I go onto the hundred website, there's a shop. All the club kits are there. I can buy them. I know it's a centralised competition. I'm not comparing like with like. But we don't have that. I can't just go onto a website and buy. If I'm from Banbury, I can't go onto the rugby-league.com website and go buy a Lee shirt. Or but a even St. if Helen you're from shirt. Minnesota and you suddenly think, hey, that's a great bit of kit. And I've, I've heard about this story. And I don't know why I'm doing an accent. It probably isn't from Minnesota. <laughs> Um, I want to get involved by at least buying some merchandise. You can't, great thing walking in. We saw women women's bespoke, bespoke merchandise. I've never mm. seen that before. We had uh, Paul from Glasgow was on uh, the comments on the Edwin Apape video saying, what a game, the whole thing just dudes class, the setup, the teams, the entertainment, other sports should follow this. Just outrageous. And a new fan of the Leopards right here, big love from Glasgow. So people have watched that. I don't know, he found the video on it anyone watching rugby league or anything before how do we capitalise on this new excitement that we're new team win something they're a bit brash they've got something about them that's why we've got IMG to capitalise on mm. that you know that's why they're here isn't it um, to promote the players to promote the stories to get you know get a documentary on Netflix or whatever it may be on BBC well there, there is going to be one on the wheelchair team that won the World Cup coming out in October they, they, they've done a fly on the wall thing Doesn't it's not just the World Cup somebody had the presence of mind to say there could be a story here there's some real characters mm. we'll start a year before we'll, we'll film all the build up and the one thing you cannot script is how it's going to end mm. and if they got knocked out in the group stages you rip yeah. up all your footage and throw it away but Wrexham always looked like being a great story particularly when there was Hollywood involvement clearly wheelchair looked like but you, you'd have thought well on the seedings and past mm. experience and two World Cups that have been you know marginally decided by the same two teams they will at least get to the final and if they don't win it's still going to be you mean have footage of people crying yeah. some you know, <laughs> now somebody should be saying lee lee either if we haven't already started lee is the story well the bbc did a documentary following the uh, great britain <laughs> ill-fated trip down under didn't they i don't yeah. know how well that was received unfortunately you know again results on on the on field didn't didn't Adam, Adam Hills through. had a documentary, didn't he, about yeah. playing in the PDR, yeah, World Cup, really which, which I haven't watched yet, but everybody who has has said it's great. Well, Australia didn't do anything in the World Cup, the worst yeah. of the four teams, yeah. but everybody knew that if it's a World Cup, if it's talking about uh, disability sport, if it's going to be fronted up by Adam Hills, it's going to be worth doing. It's just about trying to get it to new audiences, isn't it? That's that's, that's what I'm sort of saying. And I think is. IMG will do that, because yeah. I think actually they have started to do that with netball. Mm. They, the, you know, L- League 7, who are... IMG Stroke Endeavour's arm of digital media and all this kind of... They've been behind netball for the last two or three years, um, particularly turning it into the Super League and into Mm. the Vitality Super League and then into a team that goes into the World Cup and for the first time ever gets to the final. They haven't influenced anything that's happened on the field, but we all know a bit more about it than we ever did, and that is down to IMG, so you would hope that they're going to operate in the same way within Mm. Rugby League. Um, Merchandising Steve Mascord says it can be done. Centralised shopping thing. Well, he's, he's, he's he, offered to do it. He is the most frustrated person in the world because he knows it can be done because he could do it. Yeah. But he's just not given the outfit. He's going to be selling me a leopard shirt. So he's going to have it on his, if he could get them, them out, yeah, he would. Flogging them everywhere. But the problem is there aren't leopard shirts because I don't think even Lee would have overproduced mm. because it's such a huge cost. And if it comes out, you know, I think St Helens produced a limited number of their World Club Challenge winning shirts, but they didn't come out until about. Six Are months they after yet? they've won the trophy, yeah, they're out now. Oh, they're out now. Yeah. But you know, the World Cup, they'll, they'll tell you that because we didn't know till the very last minute what the nation's colours would be wearing, who would be their sponsors. We couldn't really do merch. I'm not sure. I think you have to do it. Um, Chris says, as a Warrington fan, should we get the lid off the trophy due to half the lead team coming from our 2022 team? Lid doesn't come off. No, it's all glued it on. on. It's all it on. Uh, there was a funny moment when I was speaking to someone in the tunnel after the women's finals. They, they were very impressed with the quality of the medals, asking how much it would cost to melt it down. But uh, I'm, I'm reckoning it's not much gold. Must have been content. a lose, a winning medal. Yeah, not much oh. gold content. Just, just in case, you know. No, but it's to get played. They've got to find somebody from somewhere. Very disappointing. Jody didn't uh, cry in the press conference. I think that would have gotten more views. But 
Not well, happen. the price of gold has gone galactic, apparently. There you go. <laughs> so, welcome to St. Helens. Um, do any of you watch Benadon? Because I don't. No. No. So, can't refer to Andrew's tweet about Derek Beaumont being in that. Um, no, but I think Derek Beaumont is the type of person that we could get on Celebrity Masterchef. Or, well, we can't yeah. get anyone on bloody Strictly or anything. Well, it was on Judge oh, Rinder, no. wasn't he, with Mao oh, Kukesh? <laughs> I must have missed that one. That's, yeah, that's, I, I, that's yeah, why we didn't like Derek, but now we've got to like Derek. It's, it's, it's very <laughs> confusing, this. So I don't know where we are. But we have got personality. You know, Lachlan Lamb should be on a question of sport. I don't know when the next film in a, you know. Yeah, they'll let anybody on that, will they? <laughs> I'm told they do. <laughs> I mean, you're not on the Strictly. I mean, you've been on that. The Strictly lineup is terrible. It's only last day it's on there. It's, it's terrible. Um, should we talk about the match? The, the men's one first, because we had a couple of questions mm. about it. Mainly because it's just refereeing questions. <laughs> Do you think it should be a penalty to try and challenge cup? What do you think? I didn't. I don't know what this incident is because I no, might have been downstairs. The at the no, um, you know, and I think um, they were, they were, well, it, Hulk R knocked on, didn't they? I think. Oh no, Lee knocked on. Hulk R kicked ahead. They were sort of uh, Lee and Hulk R players sort of chasing a loose ball, um, and he ended up where it was. You know, the video referee, uh, uh, sorry, Chris Kendall went to the video referee to ask whether there was a merits for a penalty try. It went up with the live decision of no try. Obviously, there was no try, mm. but in his opinion, it was no try as well in terms of uh, it not being a penalty try. And I think that was absolutely the right decision. There was no clear pullback. No. There was no clear obstruction. It was just players going towards a loose ball, trying desperately to get to it. And I think you know, absolutely right, they did go back for the knock on. And you know, I think one of the things in terms of. Um, Big decisions like that, you know. Chris Kendall was criticised. Was it last year in the St. Helens Salford game for making his own decision, not referring to the video referee and placing somebody in the sim bin? Mm -hmm. On this occasion, he did choose to send it to the video referee, and I think that's because, you know, those experiences change you as a, as, as an official. Uh, we had a Challenge Cup final a few years ago where a decision wasn't referred to the video referee. So sometimes you can't win if you refer it. It's like, <laughs> oh, why were we referring that? And then. Hull KR fans were complaining, well, why didn't they refer the Lachlan Lamb try? Well, there was just no issue with the grounding of that ball whatsoever, in my opinion. Uh, and, it, and if you're, you're in the territory then of just referring every single try for the sake of referring it. so I also liked that um, the try that was at the end, I mean, clearly, as a referee and a video referee, you're being asked to adjudicate <laughs> on something that's going to have a massive impact on how that game finishes and I thought Liam Moore was great to say I'm going to take as long as I need to take and view, I need to view this from as many angles as, you, as you've got and yeah there was a little I mean it sort of added to the excitement in the stadium because you knew that if it was going to be given the likelihood was we were going to Golden Point extra time if it wasn't given then it was going to deflate half of the stadium it's we easy made, when I don't know how many times we looked at it, but it seemed to be that it was the biggest belt and braces exercise you could possibly yeah, do. I just think that and why wouldn't you? The, I mean, the obvious criticism is it took too long, and it probably did take too long. But when you're not, when you're not the person that sat there making that decision, it's damn sight easier when you sat sat right. sort of just looking at a big screen in a ground. So well, it looks easy to just give a decision. Um, but you know, I think he was absolutely right to go through the you know the, to check every angle possible uh, and to review it to get to the right outcome. And it was the right outcome. I just think that the more you look at it and the longer it goes on, there's no chance of of it, of it being overturned because yeah. you you, said, you don't have an argument to suggest that you have then sufficient evidence. But look, it was the right outcome. It was. It I was think a try. What, what might help in the ground was if you got that commentary. You could hear it. If, I agree. it, it well, yeah. that was the other thing at the cricket yesterday. You did hear the yeah. third umpire say. Yeah, I've listened to Howard Webb uh, this week on uh, Football Daily talking to Matt Chapman about VAR in football and the measures that they're taking. And what I didn't realise in football is that those rules are governed by the sort of international FA. Right. That they can't they can't broadcast the VAR audio to a TV audience because that's not allowed under the international FA rules. Well, <laughs> we don't have those constraints in rugby league. We do can kind of do whatever we want domestically. And <laughs> we can have different and, rules yeah. wherever we are in the world. And, I, and so. I think you're right. I think go, if taking you're it in to the, the next level... And it goes to hush and yeah, you're I'm, hearing Liam Moore say, I know I do need to see that again. And agree. Uh, just give me... Uh, see, have I you think, got anything from behind the post? I would think that would add to the... I think as soon as the referee says time off yeah. and puts the square in the air, the, the referee's mic should go to the stadium. Well, Every, it's everybody now should going hear. to the broadcaster, isn't yeah. it? So everybody on telly has an advantage that those in the stadium don't have. Everybody should be able to hear what the referee is asking to check and then everybody should be able to hear what the video referee is looking at because I think sometimes when you understand what he's looking at, you then realise why perhaps it's taking a little bit longer 
um, to make that decision when you sort of just keep saying the same replays you don't understand really what, what it is but but I, I, I thought across all three games I thought they were really well officiated I don't really I mean you, you people have an issue with the sim bin in well the, this is what we've been asked way. do you think it should have been a, a, red, a yellow card for Minchella and should Ben Reynolds have been shown a red card on the 40 minute mark he looks a complete perk in the tunnel have you, have you seen him with his goggles on his head they the interview, got, I interviewed him yeah, there was a few but, but I think they must have decided that because they were going to be spraying lots of stuff around they'd all wear goggles <laughs> or like one of the Paul brothers um, well in terms of the sim bin I, I at first, live, and I said, Phil will you did. will support me on this. Live, I said straight away that's a penalty. I was concerned when Chris didn't penalise it, um, but he clearly got input from the side and one of the touch judges to, to suggest that he should have penalised it. So it was the right outcome. And then in terms of the sim bin, for me it was a, it was a sim bin because the obligations of, or the indicators that the referees are looking at on the video referee to offer advice to the on-field officials is that. Uh, the defender should be either looking to charge the ball down so clearly looking with his arms raised to charge that ball down I don't think he was doing that he, I think he was probably you'd argue if he were Minicello protecting himself but the alternative is he, he the obligation is for him to make an attempt to tackle and thereby wrap the player take him to ground and he doesn't do that so for me he runs and the he risk keep, he of, leaves, as, yeah, as well, he turns his elbow it, comes up it's, it's not a deliberate act no, but it, it's it, you know it's reckless you know by bringing your forearm up for me if you're going to charge the ball down bring your arms up to your face to protect your face because that's what you're bringing your arms up for mm. to protect your face or you bring your arms up in the air to charge the ball down and for me he doesn't do either and in doing so it, it's it's reckless and it's on a kicker who's in a vulnerable position and we've seen it earlier on this year Magic Weekend I seem to remember there was a Simbin on a, a challenge on the kicker in that game so I, I thought it was consistent with um, with it, and um, I, I passed my comments to John Davison, didn't I? <laughs> you changed his opinion <laughs> about that. Who, when, who, yes. when, he, yeah, yeah, when he reviewed the yeah. footage, agreed with you one hundred percent. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was the right outcome. And I, 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 what frustrates me is on TV is when you hear the debate um, and you don't have somebody that actually has the. You've got Rod Studd on your side. So you're all right. You've but you don't have somebody who is an expert in that. No. In, in exp- I'm not saying I'm a, I, I or a referee is an expert in in all things law related you're right to have a debate about whether it should or shouldn't be a simbin but to give the structure as to why a decision is made is what I'm saying so you weren't a fan of Jonathan Davis is an artist <laughs> well when you when you search on Twitter Jonathan Davis it was just really all negative about Jonathan Davis and John, Jonathan's comments look I, I don't have a problem with his, no. him disagreeing with the decision and I, don't, I don't have a problem with that at all yeah. what I'm saying is I think if you have somebody that can say look these are the reasons why, or these are the indicators that the on-field officials and the video referee yeah. is looking at. That's the parameters in which they work. And I think, in fairness to Dave Woods, he tried to reflect that in his comments. I also think as well that it didn't affect the game in any way because if you look at Minchella's stats, they are ridiculous. I think he's one of the leading tacklers and, mm. and he missed 10 minutes of the mm. game. Mm. Uh, but he may have been subbed at some point anyway. But um, if you're going down to the very last kick of the game to decide who's going to win it, a sin binning in the first half has not been materially affecting the outcome no, of that I, game. I, 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 there was barely a decision wrong in the game as far no, as I could see. There were, there, were, uh, there were very few set restarts and I think in the women's final there weren't any. I think it was something like, penalty count was something like 4 three, two, 2 on set restarts. So Perfect. It, yeah. you know, in terms of keeping the flow. But I, 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 as you might find if you, you read this month's article I talk about whether finals are officiated any differently and my view generally is that it's largely down to the players um, and, and less down to the referees. And that, yeah, the, there was some needle at times in the game. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, particularly sort of that first incident the after first three penalty. minutes, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, if Hulk and I look back, they probably regret that because that was two points. And that two points ultimately, you could argue, and had they an implement were, they were in possession. Yeah, in possession to be penalised 20, 30 metres out from your own line is it's pretty unforgivable. But. I think that comes back to, you know, you've got to let the officials deal with things. I think if you try and take the law into your own hands, and, and even on that, Chris Kendall tried to let the game carry on well, he almost without warned, blowing the whistle. He? he said, you know, don't get involved. Yeah. We, we could see him saying, you know, don't go there. Because he knew, he knew once once he blew the whistle, there was only ever one outcome, and that was to penalise Hulk KR. Yeah. Because they took the control away and from I him. I see Arthur, again, question his tackling style if you want, but he didn't do anything that could, he could be penalised. That was like three weeks ago story. We've moved on from that. No, something else has happened in the meantime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tackles, wasn't it? But clearly, clearly teams haven't, opposition players and teams haven't moved on, have they? Because no. they're, you know, concerned, as you would be, you know, potentially... At, 
having injuries caused, but you know he raps. Yes, he goes in low, but actually I think they were right on TV in that actually the percentage chance of, of an injury being caused is, to him. is far greater to yeah. him. I think he's, the, he's um, in the, wrong position. the other incident I think that determined the game, which is nothing to do with sim biddings or referees, is the run by Robbie Mulhall. Mulhern, yeah. Uh, Mulhern. Where did I get Mulhall from? Oh, Nathan Mulhern. Nathan Mulhern. Mulhern. Yeah. Who, who uh, would be seen on Sunday? Um, um, to set up the position for, for the drop goal, because when Hulk KR had their one chance, they were virtually on the halfway line, which. Schneider would never be expected to kick that but that's because they didn't set it up they were yeah. never in a position where yeah. they were in control of I, the I'd play. put the video on here but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to because but got Mulhern's his run, run was excellent yeah. into a hole behind the front line of the whole KR defence that, that says something about somebody's not coming across the cover and shutting down but it's also about the discipline that they had to know that like your job is to get me to there Gets them in a good position, Gets but it also the defence is on a roll, so they're not sort of fixed, ready to, to put pressure on the kicker as well. So. I think the other thing is Gareth O'Brien deserves a lot of credit for whipping the ball to nice. Adrian Lamb yeah. as well, because clearly O'Brien has a history of drop goals, um, often against Hulk. Well, that's okay. again, he wasn't closed down then, was he? But, but um, he was closed down well by mm. Hulk KR, but was skillful enough to get the ball out yeah. to give Lamb all the time and space that he needed to drop his first ever goal which I hadn't realised until mm. he did his interview he'd never dropped a goal well, he's got loads of field goals before was he? never never ever dropped a goal apparently he's, he's crap at them in training as oh. well always try and never get any. well that's, that's like the teams are good at penalty shootouts in training but then you know cock them up in real life so. <laughs> like, the, like the French so uh, well well done well done Lee well done Hulke on being part of an amazing end to a final as you say whether the 80 minutes are the best final ever or not it's irrelevant it's not the uh, the wide to west game the, the first 79 minutes that first 79 minutes and 58 seconds of that game are irrelevant because the only thing anyone remembers are the last couple and then the hooter yeah. and what happened afterwards with the future Wakefield Trinity attacking coach um, well done Lee well done Hulk talking KR. of Wakefield Trinity and coaches yes. and it's not relevant to this part of the programme oh, right. okay, yeah. um, condolences to the family of Shane McNally who passed away this weekend a gentleman mm. the man who made Gareth Ellis captain I, won't, I should be able to read in a full yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that run in the playoffs in 2004 we were robbed by match officials at Wigan <laughs> on, on that, that I don't know who it was on that oh, well I wasn't refereeing that one <laughs> uh, definitely robbed on that occasion it wasn't the forward pass from Ben Jeffries <laughs> I should have asked Ben Jeffries about that during the World Cup but I've completely forgotten about Papua that Papua New Guinea's Ben Jeffries yeah uh, hello to all our viewers in Papua New Guinea Watch out Thank for an announcement you. on Wednesday about um, Tri Nations international tournaments involving Ben Jeffries and Papua New Guinea. I was going to refer to something and then we went off tangent about something. Something to do with Saturday, but I can't remember what about the men's final. But what a final, what a finish. It was great. Everyone loved it. Apart from the Rovers fans, obviously. I, mean, I, I thought it was reflective of the season. I th- said this to, I think, you to you both in that it wasn't the best quality game. There was a number mm-hmm. of errors from both teams. But as the season has proved we've had so many close games we've had so many games that have gone to Golden Point it, it, you know it was drama, entertaining drama. you couldn't take your eyes off it no. the atmosphere was fantastic I, I, for me it just had everything and that and that's kind of what we want yeah okay you want you don't want as many drop balls perhaps but look it, it, it plays its part doesn't it in, in what well, no try has ever been scored without a mistake being made no. I think the other thing is that Hull Cow will rue their end of sets because I don't think they were as good as, as Lee were and where no. they wanted to finish them how they wanted to a couple of times they sort of Petered out. Um, the other thing to look at is the, you know, the, the preparation. I think because we talked a little bit last week about Hull KR resting. Well, players. this will go into the next game as well. Yeah, won't it? Hull KR is, resting yeah. players. Lee didn't. They played the full side. Lee Lee was successful, um, as we probably discussed with the women's game. St. Helens took a similar approach um, yep. to Lee, uh, and they were successful. And Halifax did. And Halifax. So all three teams that played their full strength sides were successful. So. Is it a one offer in terms of this year as opposed to, but, but three out of three mm. would suggest that maybe you're better to play your, your team. And I, I, the other thing that was mentioned was about the approach that Hulk KR took versus Lee. So Lee, Lee stayed very close to the stadium, mm. Hulk KR didn't. And Hulk KR, um, I don't think, went, did they go to the stadium? Did they do a captain's run the day before? They went to the stadium, but I don't yeah. think they did a captain's run. They, right. they, I wander around. Yeah. yeah, so I think again, looking at interesting to look Although at the different approaches that, as to that's how they do it. That's interesting about the Lee staying in the Hilton across the road. There are teams that have played at the Hilton that have frozen 
because all they ever do looking out their window is see the stadium. Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't that mentioned that on Monday? Twenty fourteen yeah. with yeah. Castleford. Yeah. yeah, that there, there was nowhere for them to go and nothing it. to do other than focus on the fact that I'm going to be there tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be a big day. There's a lot more you can do around Wembley, as we found. Um, <laughs> Got a car wash. Where, where have these things come yeah. from? Um, yeah, but sitting in Costa Coffee next to the hotel. If you're a player, it, it, all you're doing it's is all those things though that clubs will look at. Absolutely. You know, when it, the time comes around, comes around again for next year's final, is that how do we approach it? What's the best yeah. approach, etc. And, and the great thing for Derek was that it was across the road from his hotel, so he could start drinking. <laughs> we asked the people if you were there, what did you do around the ground? Did you just go in at whenever the doors open at eleven o'clock and stay there all day? Did you? Uh, watch your game and do nothing else what did you did you want more entertainment do you want something else going on around the ground the other thing I, I would say and the question I would ask is did anybody try to leave the stadium to go, <laughs> back, go <laughs> back in because that's what you can do at Magic Weekend yeah. and if you're going to have three games on like you have at Magic Weekend then you almost need to encourage that yeah, that, yeah. because there are, there are now plenty of bars and restaurants yeah, there on, are. On, on by the ground so you can go out if you want to go out and watch the first game or I don't know watch, Not pay watch the main game and go point. out and what, maybe come back and watch a bit more but um, yeah I'd be just interested to see whether that, that whether people could do that don't read the letters page just don't just don't read it <laughs> that's, my, that's my advice to you this week um, so Lee made their own kind of history um, uh, as did St Helens thought, Tara Jones first ever oh, have, did you want to say something no it's because I thought the St Helens won it in a, in a golden five minute period in the first yeah, half definitely. but the difference between the teams was that their experienced players controlled the game when it needed to be um, and they did, they, there's no question that if Kira Bennett had played the outcome may well have been exactly the same but Leeds missed the general in the middle of the field and, and having her on commentary behind us rather than out on the field I think probably upset Leeds more than they thought it would um, but there's no question that St Helens were the better team on the day There were fitness questions about players at Hull KR before the final there who were. played Ryan Hall played very well fitness questions about Leeds Rhinos players before the game Zoe who Hall played Hall. and this is another thing going back in here I kind of tried to in the press conference afterwards and you don't want to ask the losing coach many questions because you know there's no there isn't a story the story is the people who win and say oh we did this and blah blah just being generally happy and the loser just congratulates them and wants to go and cry that's trying to steer things in that direction when I said is there anything you would have done differently not the team last week but before this game and, I, and Maybe that's something I'll explore in the future, but I'm not sure some of the players who played for Hull KR or Leeds were as fit as they needed to be. I, I just and, think and it's whether you take that gamble or not, isn't the, it? The, the thing out of the women's game was it, it's the first one. You don't know what it's going to be, no. but both of the teams, I thought, made it an occasion. Saints were the better team. They had um, key individuals in key positions. Um, their spine was absolutely superb. But what a lot of neutrals will remember out of that game is Caitlin Beaver's try. Um, a fire-esque? I, yeah, I, I generally, was, generally was, reminded me of that at the time. Just stunning. Um, and, and that, again, elevates the women's game to, us, to another level. Terra said two match, fish, match officials made their mark. Tara Jones. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Tara Jones, yeah. first one to score a try at Wembley. Uh, try given by a video game. referee, so it was never <laughs> not going to be given. Yeah. And uh, and Caitlin Beavers, obviously, we, we know about her history with with officiating. But uh, no, it was the disappointing thing for me as a sort of a you know a neutral watching was that it felt like the game was almost over when Saints had that five minute patch. Yeah. I'm not suggesting it was because Leeds did get another they got another try, didn't they? But it, yeah. they, they, they did never really they never really it, kicked yeah. on uh, no, to what, really what put they Saints under to pressure. Do was after Beavers try, then have ten or fifteen minutes mm. where they control the game. But actually, they conceded another try yeah. on the back of it. Yeah. And, and that's but the other, the other thing, you know, we're talking about Wembley at the beginning and, and the magic and the mm. law. We've cast an envious eye over what the NRLW are doing. We've seen the crowds, we've seen the, the, the quality of the competition. I would not be surprised if there were a lot of women players uh, looking at those girls got to play at Wembley National Stadium. That's an experience I wouldn't mind. And whilst they're not going to turn down 50,000 Australian dollars per annum, their, their season is only 10 weeks long. You could see one of the attractions to pull some women back in the other direction, particularly those maybe who are coming towards the end of an illustrious career, 
Um, so Ali Brigginshaw, for example, which is a name that I, you know, just off the top, of, been brilliant. She's the famous one. Yeah. However many years that she has, she she at some point will retire from yeah. international rugby. She might be tempted to come over here. Is she going to be a journey woman? I think she she's probably at that point where. She's not. She's <laughs> not doing whatever she wants. She's already a real. Po- she's and, and I wouldn't call her a journey woman to her face if she wasn't. She's, I'm she's, joking. She's sort of the, the Wally Lewis, yeah, the yeah, NRLW. Yeah. I don't so, worry, I'm joking. <laughs> but but you know, we've got an attraction there now. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, that they cannot match, and there's nothing that they can do that could match the playing at Wembley and that game being being back at midnight to yeah. Australia and having that history and now the women's tradition to go with it as well. That's you know has to start with not, this first game. Not just that, I think it's also from the bottom up as well, isn't it? As a, oh, 100%. Um, you know, in terms 100%. of those girls starting out playing rugby league now have the opportunity to play at Wembley, and that's a massive Well, there's a, a great little character. story that Danica will tell in her column in the New 420 out this oh, week. This week yeah. well, quite a little so It's in the column, it's right? got a poor, poor of a. Yeah, if you're a. Is it a leopard's paw? Are we yeah, sure? If it, well, are you sure? It, it, it's a leopardora cat, panther. Cat-ish. It doesn't matter, yeah. they're both one. Um, she says that you know she bought, she was brought up in a rugby league family where when they watched the Challenge Cup final, which they all did as a family together, the brothers went out and recreated what they'd seen, and they were the Ellery Hanleys yeah. and Andy Farrells. Now little Danica sitting at home today can go. I want to be Jody Cunningham and go out on the field yeah. and join them, and, and it's just it, that's what it means, isn't it? I want to know who she would have been from the men. Who, who would she? Have been? I, don't, I think she felt excluded, oh, but now yeah. little little Danica. She could have been Andy Fowler, the next Danica. Bun on the red. Um, can, um, I've got role models. Leeds should have scored early in that one anyway. And then it could have been completely different. But they didn't Le- take Leeds' first 10 minutes, actually, they were pretty good. Yeah, they, they were the were. dominant team. And if Amy Hardcastle had managed to score and a brilliant tackle from Ebony Party to, to, to stop her, then it, it may have been a different game. So we had the, we've got the last odd trophy. That's that's enshrined in history. In the in the eighteen ninety five cup, a brand new thing invented five years ago, or whatever. We got the Ray French Trophy, the Women's Challenge Cup, which has been going since twenty twelve. But we kind of forget the early history of it. They the, get the player of the match. Come on now. Nice. And this is something I mentioned a couple of years ago, and, and we were told it's in the pipeline. No, it's obviously not. Then is it? Because they haven't done it. The I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. The other thing about the Ray French uh, Player of the Match award is give him a proper trophy. Yeah, it did look a bit crap. It's a piece of plastic, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I got a better reward for arguing it in the sick form, but it's the kind of thing where if we had it on this table, you'd say, Tat. "Have we got that from?" Tat. Like, what are you doing? Um, Not that Louis Jufre didn't deserve no, it. No, no, he deserves a better. Deserves a better point. He, he came. We, we we managed to interview him as he came off the field, <laughs> and. He had a little bit of plastic in his hand. Yeah. Oh, is that your man of match award? It's like not a little cup or anything. I think it was actually glass. Well, it well. glass. It looked plastic. No, it was glass. I was trying to get in the RFL's good. So if he dropped it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it would have been all right. But Johnny Cunningham won the player of the match in the, uh, and, and she was quite good. Uh, I think you make a fair point, though, about the name. It needs a name. Doesn't yeah, it? And it's there's not just about names out there. No, no, no. <laughs> and they can do it for the grand final as well if there's two. You know, yeah. we've, we've made a Only huge... after two people. Do we've, we've, we've made a huge deal, haven't we, about honouring the lionesses that we've had going yeah. back, the, the shoulder, you know. The, the... And we've talked about culture on this programme before, haven't we? And, and, and the really good thing that you, you've been talking about with us, with Leeds Rhinos and what they did and announcing the, that squad with mm. using the... You know, men that have been involved over the years in in Challenge Cup games. That's the ca- same kind of thing, but for player of the match, you sort of hark back to mm. something historic in the in the women's game that and somebody that merits you know their name being attached to that trophy. But then I'm going to end up ranting about why the grand final men's one should be named after Rob Burrow still, and we still haven't moved on that on that debate. We can do that later in the year. Yeah, um, but Jodie Cunningham, she's she's just a great ambassador for because she speaks so well about everything, passionate about and, the women's game. She's the one that tweet of the week for turning up on her doorbell celebrating. Have you seen? Oh, that? it's brilliant! It's brilliant. Absolutely superb. And again, that shows the, um, the the level of self deprecating humour that runs through this sport. Have you, have you seen? Has she taken the hat off? No, yet? I haven't actually. Oh, it's really funny because she clearly has been out all night and is slightly the worst. Exactly so. I hope they're still drinking. And so she should be. So, so the James she's got one of it. these ring doorbells yeah. and films herself <laughs> ringing the doorbell, singing a song about Saints having won it three times. Around. And it's just, very, she's still wearing a bucket hat <laughs> and it's light and it's very funny. It's very funny. Excellent. Um, the Jodie yeah. Cunningham yeah. Player of the match, match won by sure. Jodie yes. Cunningham. Yeah. By Jody Cunningham. Yeah. And she got a proper medal as well, rather than I mean, I, I, I assume the medal was made of you know some kind of cheap. It wasn't chocolate. No, 
but that's the that's the way if they bite into those wings <laughs> they think they're gold yeah. not sure um, but you know well done St Helens very well deserved and again you can't go backwards it's at Wembley now people will talk about whether the, the game is strong enough to be there or not but it's there and, and, and if we miss out on these opportunities who knows what we're going to miss out on the lioness is on at the same time on ITV then we just had the netball whether you think women's sport is deserving of the courage or not it's just going to be there well again so. there's a report that says it's investors just are now looking at women's sport more than men's sport mm. because I think it's got more potential and it's got a, a better image and, and, and they can control it because it's at the start rather mm. than they have to buy into something that's already some, so huge in, you, you, the, you talk about potential the two halfbacks were both oh, 19 yeah. Amy Taylor yeah who was great amazing goal kicking as well Caitlin Casey who, who ran, ran herself to cramp <laughs> Wembley cramps back 19 years old yeah but, and, and I think you imagine it on the way coming back up that's coming through in this current phase of where women's rugby league is but the generation next and after who are going to have more professional coaching and access to strength and conditioning and nutrition and this and that and the other. Well, that's why clubs have got to buy into it because mm. it's no coincidence that the two clubs that were at Wembley are two clubs that look after their women because they value what that brings to the club. I think Matty Smith spoke fantastically and again, more great stories. You know, he played for Everton with, with Wayne Rooney. And suddenly people are going, really? What's he doing coaching women's rugby league? Actually played at Wembley as well. He's another one who's played at Wembley and now coached the winning team at Wembley. Lois comes over fantastically as a women's coach in a women's sport. So yeah, you've got two really contrasting leaders of those two teams, but they're both really good stories. And the other advantage that both of those teams will have almost this time next year, Challenge Cup final again next year, is that because realistically there's probably only three teams in the competition yeah. that um, are in contention possibly four the chances of them going back and playing mm -hmm. at Wembley again for a second time oh, it's a huge motivation yeah. for both of them because of but also they've got the experience of having done that yeah. so those yeah. nerves won't quite yeah. be the same um, you know so you know it, it stands you know hopefully again you know the England team in, in good stead by having that mm -hmm. that sort of experience but I think you made a very interesting point as well about um we've all waxed lyrical in the games that we've seen in the NRLW that they're 70 minute games mm. and one thing that was quite noticeable Wembley's a very wide pitch Wembley's a very draining occasion that the last sort of five or six minutes of each half the quality dropped through no fault of the people that were playing but there was probably more drop ball in maybe those periods of the game than there had been previously to it and it might well be that is there any reason why, and we're not detracting from anything the women are doing here, that we shouldn't standardise the game and that maybe it should be 70 minutes in both hemispheres? And you mentioned as well that the women in the NRLW play with a slightly smaller ball, which genetically is tailored to hand, average hand size. Um, why should we not go down that road as well? In, in cricket, the, the boundaries are shorter. It's not, but no one's no one goes. It's close. not saying, oh well, it's because you're women. It's like we'll we'll tailor the game to you, yeah, to make you the best you can be, rather than you have to, uh, you know, you have to play within the confines of how it's always been played. I just think me. it's important to have that debate, and have a mature so. debate, I as opposed so. to people saying, oh, well, you're being sexist. No, no, it's, no, not, no. it's <laughs> not about that. It's about uh, you know how what. You know, if the NRL are doing it in the women's competition over there, then and the World Cup was played under those rules when. Yeah. No, uh, what was it? Played at 70 minutes, was it? No, it was yeah. 80 the world. No, it was 80. Because yeah, that was the international, the, the we, international thought, we thought we'd win you all say the, the yeah. 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 So, yeah, but So you have to have one standard we, set of rules. Did we think that? You, I'm okay. sure you said no. no, you didn't. Okay. <laughs> I no faith in England. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to be in trouble for that as well. And of course, uh, for the uh, seventh year running, or whatever it is, I was completely wrong in writing off St. Helens at the start of the season, wasn't it? Because they're going to the young squad and they've lost all their players and blah. Well, I got two, out, two out of my three winning it on the drive, didn't they? The, the other thing about St Helens was they virtually, apart from Leah Burke, who's injured. Um, so they, yeah, the, the young player comes into the side and scores a try to see Phoebe Hooker. I, I they played. They had available to them one to nineteen, so they didn't all play in the positions that you would have those numbers. But again, just shows you know great recruitment, settled team, quality players. Uh, they had all the ingredients and and and. They lived up to it. Not there for the 50 quid the game paid because they're not. You know. 
told her you had the mask because she'd have gone in the dressing room at half time <laughs> and said to the ladies women there's another 50 quid <laughs> Uh, it, it wasn't a, I'm not going to sit and pretend it was the best final ever or anything but there's again great moments in there that will, will not be forgotten made. history was so. made and the big moments will be replayed forever and ever the joy of the the Saints team on the final whistle mm. the, the, the interviews that they gave about how much it meant to them Caitlin's try Tara Jones's first ever try at Wembley those are moments that I just look how far the women's time. game has come in the last what 10-12 mm. years is it since that first final at Hewith and and how far is it going to go in the next 10-12 years I think that's that's the important we've got to back it mm. Brandon Moore said last week when I asked him why should people say for the 1895 Cup final he said it's a different style of rugby to Super League and the women's game is again a different style of rugby so you you had there three different styles of rugby league the women's game is a throwback to how the men's game may have been slightly the before 1980s, professionalism a yeah. bit more expansive or whatever less structure I mean the worry is, of course, now they're going to become professional and it's going to become structured and it's going to be rubbish. But Well, the NRLW isn't. So, so that's the good news. But the, there's nothing I've to say about the winners' game. Is there's, I think we said all about the final. Well done, St Helens. Well done, Leeds, for playing your part in it. And uh, go watch the stuff afterwards because I, sp- I spotted the first ever try score, women challenge cup try score at Wembley. Um, and Emily Rudge with the cup. She's very happy. Jordy Cunningham did say that uh, in the press was that they were trying to get over to the players that it's just the same grass as when we train at home and Emily Rudge was saying to her no it's not um, Halifax versus Batley in the 1895 Cup final I think I missed the whole of the first half so you'll have to tell me exactly what happened well nothing happened oh, so well, then, I, I came in got me brownies and a couple of sandwiches that were left and uh, another as Eddie Waring would have said grandstand finish with the most ridiculous try ever not converted which is a shame because we would have had more golden point would have got on even later I know uh, what time did you Berg- leave about half past nine we left Burger <laughs> King may have shot <laughs> <laughs> but um, excitement excitement That's I, all, I think if we were being honest it was a pretty dour game until the 67th minute and part of that is because Halifax were in so much control defensively um, which you cannot deny that was the platform for their victory and they should be lauded for that. Um, but Batley play a bit of a percentage game for, for the bulk of it, just to keep them in it. Um, and they, fa- I think, you know, Craig Lingard said afterwards in his bare feet and bucket hat that <laughs> they hadn't got into the game early enough. And, um, you know, the, the last 20 minutes, they almost gave themselves too much to do because they were they were slightly off the pace but when they got into it what a finish and I don't think you need to worry about the first no, I mean, 78 I, minutes I, I think I need to sort of put my cards on the table that my alarm went off at something you were like asleep. half five in the morning <laughs> and, and by the time it, it came to because it was half an hour late kicking it off was. as well oh, yes, and I think I was a bit like oh, I, I'm ready for home now actually so, and <laughs> that's I no drank, disrespect if I drank coffee I'd oh. have one that, promise that's no disrespect to the 1895 Cup or the championship teams that were involved or anything else um, but you're right I, I didn't I wasn't quite engaged in that in that <laughs> game quite in quite the same way and I think it's it's almost harder when you're building up to a major game you accept that the crowd's going to be quieter and smaller, but I think once you've sort of seen the Lord Mayor's show and it's sort of after the Lord Mayor's show, it's hard then yeah. to, you know, with maybe six thousand or eight thousand or ten thousand in the stadium to replicate the atmosphere that you've got yeah. when you've got fifty-eight. It's just impossible. So, I think all those factors combined meant that I wasn't quite fully engaged. <laughs> but I think you're absolutely right. Towards the back end of the game, it, it was exciting. And it, but when I had a chat with James Dayton and um, Jody Broughton that were commentating for Radio Leeds, their perception of the game was completely different to my perception. So it just shows that mm. you know they thought it was an, a, a, you know a sort of end to end game and, and and a fascinating game. I, I think because of the closeness of it, it was always a contest. Yeah. I just I never quite felt badly were going to do it, and I no. think that's because. In a way, for the, the sake of the game, it should have come enough. earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I would say is, um, they scored two tries to one, which again, normally you would hope the team that scores more mm. tries comes out victorious. But the first thing that that Batley did was pay credit to the way Halifax played. Mm. Um, so there's absolutely no question that the right team won. Some of the um, individual skills, particularly from Josh Hodson. It was a ridiculous Beautiful flip pass, flip pass yeah. set up the first try and mm. 
he was one of the he, he got caught but found a one armed lobbed yeah. pass in the second track he's from Telford you know again we bang on about this all the time that there is a whole pool of talent out there somewhere that we don't do enough to harness and full credit to clubs like Batley like Sheffield who give opportunities to players who don't come from traditional areas around them you know in, in any other sport we'd have known who he was and a little bit more about him rather than wait until we'd seen what he could do and go oh mm. let, let's find out a bit more about this oh he's from Telford and you know what we'll remember about that game is not the dour defence of Halifax which actually won it and they That's deserve right. all the credit for that yeah. what we will be consistently putting on our phone in a spare minute when it's raining and the bus hasn't come yet is let's have a look at that Batley try again and, and, and we had people putting it on social media who are not fans of either club or even necessarily the sport have you seen this and and it is 16 it's, passes in it according to Kevin it felt yeah. like there were more it, just, well, it, just like, it seemed to go on forever in slow motion I just think that again you, you know when you're writing a report and you're trying to make a note of who it was, <laughs> um, it wasn't just the passes, it was the quality of some of those passes. Yeah, there's a one ridiculous long pass from Lou Cooley right at the very beginning, and then there's a, another almost a American football style pass <laughs> just to keep the mood going. Yeah. Um, dare, dare I say it? Um, Imagine if a team played like that in the first minute. Oh, <laughs> man, you have to be fit. <laughs> well, that'd, be like the, that'd be like the 100, you just like, whack it all the time. Yeah. The, 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 the other thing as well that was, was if just added to the drama, was that Hooley took the kick from the touchline, for which he should again be exonerated for anything, and, oh, and 100% right. credit to every Batley player that ran over to him to hug him at the end, and when they must have been heartbroken. It was at the Halifax end. Now, normally, when you see a kick... He's gonna miss. All of the fans are leaping up and down. I don't see. I didn't see a Halifax fan move, and there wasn't a murmur from them because they honestly thought that kick was over. Yeah, I thought it, it must got have over because they were quiet. To yeah, begin with. it must have been. Yeah, close. <sighs> we had to, to, to look at the flags, didn't we? Yeah. Added to the drama. Did Satan? They should have just put the flags up and given it because no one would have noticed. We would have liked to. Make no, it was a it was a great effort by both teams, and and both and both teams actually were well supported in this. Yeah, uh, and, and the so the, the atmosphere throughout was fantastic. Yeah. That, uh, again, yes, it's a bit cavernous because there aren't that many of them, but you could hear the Batley fans even at the final whistle had yeah. appreciated that their, that team had got them to Wembley and done them proud. The Halifax fans went berserk because yeah. they'd won the first piece of silverware since 1987. Really interesting other comment from from Simon Griggs I thought was that whilst he lauded the 1987 team and some of those teams are, are still around Halifax and are iconic figures he was just pleased now that that sort of monkey for his team yeah. was off the bat because they were now going to be talked about which which was great yeah. I'm trying to find out what the crowd was at Wembley for the FA Vars and FA Trophy because I think they just have a finals day for the Things, but I can't find it. It's not on, it's not on the uh, the website for the uh, the FA. I can't find it quickly enough. Anyway, but they don't sell out the whole state. They have the uh, the spot. I'm sure they probably have more fans there than I left it at the 1895. But I think we, we do get caught up in you yeah. know unless well, who is there outside of the championship? It's going to have that big travelling support. You know, there isn't there, there aren't two, three, four teams who are going to have that. No. So it is what it is. And to lose, presumably you'd have to pay a ball. Yeah, it, it's it's a competition that fills an, a, a brief. I just think we need to promote it more because I think it's valuable in that. its own right. And every interview we did beforehand and every interview we got afterwards was all about we need to make more of this. Even Louis Euphray was yeah. saying, you know, this is a, this is for part time players. You can't explain what this means as as somebody who it's not their main line of work to get the opportunity to play at a stadium like Wembley. They didn't care whether there was ten thousand, no. five thousand, or nobody there. They got the opportunity to play. That you know, their, their life will be now spent when they're in their sixties and seventies in the local pub in Halifax. And do you want me to tell you about that time mm -hmm. I played at Wembley? It's a strange French <laughs> Um Is there anything else to say about Wembley? As a no, I think. We, I, we, I, I, I think However, how we move forward on it, we've had the debate on here before. We can only say the same things over and over again. Isn't it? We can, I, we can I say, "What are you doing to Tim? We need this because we're not the one signing the team." All I hope is, is that because of the things we've highlighted and the memories that have been made, that anybody who didn't go now regrets not going if they could have done, and that next year they might think, "I'll go." 
slapping at something Sid said on Twitter. But I, 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 how are you, Sid? If you're listening, how are you bearing up? Because obviously you're a Rovers fan and you didn't win. But I think there's a big difference between this year and losing 50 now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 the emotion yeah. scale because you were so close. Um, I've not seen the Sunshine. I've not seen the highlights because uh, we're still off the. It's like the end of the World Cup last year. I didn't really want to watch any more rugby for a while. And, I'm not really interested in Saints versus Huddersfield in a game which I mean it looked close at one point mm. but Saints won I, I took them sending off I took them by 12 so I was close um, but yeah controversial sending off it cost them the game apparently so it's, I, I've not read the quotes from Ian Watson but I've seen the headlines so I don't need to read the quotes cost it disgrace this, I don't know what, I've not seen it referees again yeah. <laughs> is Ian Watson going to be on the naughty step with uh, probably, and, uh, probably. <laughs> we, we are getting to the point where coaches are first port of call not looking at what oh, they yeah, but, as, but as I've said last but, week because we're heading towards the back end of the season and so mm. the pressure ra- uh, ratchets, ratchets up and, and once somebody opens their mouth then it encourages mm. somebody else to do it although having said that he's aware that they're now under investigation so I was surprised that he'd, he'd said something but he he obviously wanted to get in a line about Morgan Knowles, which that fell on deaf ears, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, because he didn't get charged. Not been charged yet. So um, if he does get fined, he might regret saying it because <laughs> it didn't have the desired outcome, I don't <laughs> think. Saints up to joint second, missing a heap of players. See, at least when I said that, if I, if we had a grand final now between Saints and White and months ago, I would tip Saints. So at least I may have got that one right. Well, I think when you look at the running as well, I saw people were discussing mm. uh, yesterday, then St Helens arguably have an easier run in yep. uh, than Catalan. Um, so it will be an interesting it's, I don't think they're bothered about Catalan I think they're looking at obviously Wigan and Lee uh, Lee's going to be really interesting because we who's going to back against them doing anything do they? <laughs> but we've said all along it's a relatively small squad and they're, they're always a re- there always is a reaction to winning at Wembley because it's emotionally uh, it's the way Saints were at the start of the season you've got to get up to that level and then you've got to come down for another six games before. You, so Lee know they're in the playoffs. I I genuinely don't know how they're going to go this week or next week or when it'll kick in that the, the mental rather than the physical fatigue of winning the cup. Yeah. Um, but it will because there's no team that hasn't suffered that at some point. You know, you, you, there's a Hull. I think was it? You know, um, one year won the cup and then very few games after that. Lee certainly in. It was at 2014, won the cup, and it meant everything to them. And don't think they won another league game after that. So that there will, Saints will be looking at, at Wigan and Lee and saying, "Can we get to second? Because what we want is, yes, we'd love the league leader shield, but what we want is a home semi final. And I think they can. And I, I, it won't be easy because the, you know, clearly Lee's is out for another for, for two games now, and they are really light on forwards. Lou is 108 years old. I don't know how long, how many games he's going to play. <laughs> I spoke to him this week. He couldn't get off the couch, um, but he played because the you know again they've got uh, they've got they've got no real options. But uh, it's it's going to be an interesting. I think Catalan's next two games are Wigan and Lee. Yeah. So if they win, arguably both of those, but certainly one of those, they're almost guaranteed Lee Lee the Shield. Um, but the big game this week. If we're only in a preview, one game. Well, I mean, the play, uh, we, we've got to go soon because wait for the playing Stanley in the women's championship, whatever the division's called these days. Monday oh. night rugby. It's not on the Premier. I mean, oh, I could put it on okay. there, but yeah, apparently Friday. I mean, I'm hoping I might not get in now, which is quite funny. Every everyone, <laughs> every media person wants to be at Wakefield. You mean they don't Friday. want to be at Huddersfield versus Salford? Every that might be just the Carters. You, you're you're accredited now. You could find <laughs> your media. But, yeah. Not Saints Hull Cow, not Wigan I'll versus Hull. Telly. There's no point talking about any other game because that's the one. Yeah. And with both having had major coaching changes, it is just ridiculously intriguing. So who had Sean Long at Wakefield at the start of the season? <laughs> Despite the fact that Fellas and Roman, I'm trying to look at the league table. Who had, him, who had him there even post the announcement of him leaving Wet Feathers? And I don't think anybody would have mm-hmm. done. Uh, with almost like instant. And not just to the end of the season, it's for next season yeah. as well as assistant coach. So he's you would also think that Sean Long linking up again with Luke Gale. Gale. The two of them together at Leeds, that when, you know, again, th- two mm. great halfbacks with great knowledge of how to control games. Coming up against Blake Austin making his debut, if he's fit, fit enough for Castleford. It's like got every ingredient you could possibly want. With Danny Ward and. Yeah. Um, Dane, Dane Dora here. Yeah. In people you haven't remembered from a long time ago. But 
What do you reckon? I don't know. I think Wakefield will win. Well, as and, that, and that's that's a bad thing for me to say. I think I'm um, I'm giving away far too much content that's in a magazine that's out this coming way. out coming out this but way. But as as Brian Noble says, looking at this very game, he'll be there in the media. Um, he thinks that if Castleford win, it isn't the end of Wakefield, but if Wakefield win, it might be the end of Castleford. Interesting. I just yeah. think with the home advantage that Wakefield have. I think the expectation will be on Wakefield. Yeah, it's, it's the weird uh, kind of the change in mm. not momentum. I'm not sure. I don't think there's expectation on either team. I just mm. think it's, I, it's I, it is complete do or die. I think there is Maybe. there's a bit more bit of cockiness amongst the Wakefield supports after the way things have gone of last few weeks. The way Wakefield seem to have been playing over about. the last few weeks is that they can they put a string of victories together at home and then they believe a little bit of hype go away yeah. and get beaten quite heavily but then come back at home and regroup and I think have they got four of their last six games Something at home like that. Graham Colley said that the other week so I trust him he knows what he's talking about I, I, so you would think the ball is in their court I think we'll win but you think we'll win yeah uh, but I mean if I'm not there I'll watch it on the telly instead. you'll be there I mean, I'll be how there, can yeah. they deny you access I used to work there. Exactly. I'm like, why? Michael Carr. Have you still got your staff pass? That's all you have. That's just hilarious. I could get a game. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so that's Friday on the telly. Saturday on the telly, it's Leeds Catalans. Sunday, Leeds Warrington. Um, which also at the same time as Leeds are in the Wheelchair Challenge Cup. Well, final. not quite the same time, but, but not, not able to up. get to both. Terrible planning. Although the wheelchair team, should they retain their cup, are hoping to hot foot it up the M1 to be at Headingley to be able to show the trophy to the fans maybe at half time of the men's game remind me I need to send a zoom link to someone so they can come on the programme tomorrow um, <laughs> um, Kerrin says Martin Gleeson back at wire he is so yes yeah every, every, interesting that they, they said in a voluntary com- capacity what's all these I uh, can not afford him what's all these coaching changes after the, the after the transfer deadline thing? you can't sign any more players we're just signing a load of coaches <laughs> I don't know what if they're going to do it says Kevin but I don't know I've just uh, got a feeling Blake Austin's going to have a big game I mean it'd be not funny if he's injured and can't play because that's not what I mean but it'd be funny if they made a big deal about signing and then he doesn't play uh, any word on the Super League TV deal says Teddy seems to be dragging on week Phil after, any word on the uh, TV yeah, deal week after next uh, not this week not, uh, not last week when it was the committee you can read it all about what we think it's going to be <laughs> in the new issue of 4020 magazine I won't ask that we have some insight is it, is it what I think doesn't know whether it's no. we don't know whether it's true or is, not is it what do you reckon it'll be what everyone thinks it's going to be I think there'll be some things around the deal that will offer greater opportunities to make money in different areas without it being here's a big fee here you are clubs go away and spend it it's going to be we haven't really what? got any more but what we have got is access to make more what's that phrase about opportunity mm. We've never missed an opportunity to take an opportunity. Now, I think you might find, without giving too much away, that every game will be available to be screened in a round, which will offer clubs the opportunity to perhaps make up some of the money that they're not going to get from They'll have to, a major rights deal. I, I think, without knowing anything, because we're just talking Super League there, Teddy, but I, I think it would be wise for clubs outside of Super League to make their own plans of ways they could monetize their matches to those who are not in the ground and, and as part and of it I think we may well see a video referee at every game <sighs> you come out of retirement to that it's a paid video referee people, the, the roulette wheel bring that people back. would say it was bad enough when I was there never mind bringing me back out of retirement I'll have to say and I know we're coming to the end that I used to take Harry Jepson down to Wembley which was an absolute joy that's and, and, car parking and I miss those days because he told wonderful stories of people and eras that would have been long lost if he hadn't told Did he get booed out at Leicester Forest Services? No, (laughs) but the one person on our road trip who could not stop being recognised or meeting people or having people come over to say, hello, how are you? Like travelling with a celebrity. We had you on telly for. Yes, Richard, it was. (laughs) (laughs) And it wasn't Richard, and I was just a driver, so... Uh, everyone asking if we watch Adam Hill's programme no not yet we, but we, we will do we've got it put Mark. I've got to watch it because I've got nothing to write about next month I've you know, <laughs> done Wembley now. you'll have to see what I've written when the magazine comes so out so I don't know well, exactly that's, that's next Monday when I read it I'll, I'll know what I've written and what I can write next month I'll give it to you on Friday at the game 
if I'm there, yeah. Oh, I should yeah. mention my small victory, or my second small victory of the Challenge Cup final weekend. was uh, One with John Davidson. Well, well the, the yeah, the one with yeah. John Davidson, but the second one was with Gemma Carter and Gavin oh, Willis, yeah. which was... Um, we were in a conversation about the Challenge Cup final last year and they said who refereed that and I said, it was me but I said the fact that you can't remember yeah. is definitely a positive yeah. <laughs> which I think you might so hopefully for Chris place. Kendall he won't be remembered as refereeing it next year <laughs> that's a good thing did you just cough loudly who was the referee <laughs> yeah. did, did you enjoy the, the press facilities I've got to say it's not like that everywhere. No, I can imagine it's not like that everywhere. No, um, I've seen some of the pictures at, at Castleford's ground. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, it was good. It was interesting. It was just a different insight. Again, you know, if, uh, I've been there on, on, on in different roles, but but not as uh, involved in the press. So it was interesting to see how it how it all operates and how you all interact. And how on. little work gets done. Yeah, yeah. The interaction. What are all those <laughs> numbers you're writing <laughs> down? Yeah. Yeah. Who doesn't interact? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah that's, that's also true. Um, I think we're done then. Uh, so we'll be back next Monday. It's not a bank holiday next week, is it? It's a couple of weeks yet for the bank holiday. Uh, back next week to re- reflect on the chan- uh, the wheelchair challenge cup final, which I don't think anyone's going to be at. But it's on the BBC. It's on the BBC. I'll I'll, I'll have to watch it after I finish. Kicks work. off at one o'clock. One o'clock. So I start work at half past one. So I can watch the first half hour. Hopefully, and, but even if even if Leeds build up a big lead, you can't write off the calendar. Come back, or the vice versa, because it's just. The ebbs and flows of it the world. It would be nice game. to think it might be on the big screen at Headingley for those. Um, it. It, I don't know if, it, if no. they can do that because I don't know if they can get access get to the wire. right button. Get a wire. Yeah. Yeah. Coat hanger. Yeah. I'll so. go back to the set. <laughs> one for the teenagers. <laughs> just just make sure no one rod hole. Do, do, do that. Um, <laughs> on that bombshell, we'll be back next week. Talk about that. Stay tuned for uh, someone involved in the final, hopefully tomorrow, uh, if I remember to send her a link just not to reveal who it is and uh, if not enjoy the weekend uh, if you're at a game uh, let's hope it, it goes your way especially if you're a Wakefield fan if you're a Caswell fan uh, go live with somebody else I don't, I don't know if you know where that's a terrible ending by the way podcast listeners but that's all they're getting on YouTube